Hi folks, you're with Tastus today at your pushback channel. What follows in this op-ed is a useful illustration as to just how destructive equal outcome ideology and the doctrinaire affirmative action policies devised to pursue it has been and continues to be to Western wealth, Western livelihoods and Western standards of living. To find a classic example, and one that ties quite neatly into uh, COVID-19, we need look no further than the events leading up to the appointment of America's number one medical scientific immunologist, the affirmative action black American woman, Kismikia Corbett, recently mentioned on Fox News. Now, this is the woman tasked with one of the most important and critical jobs in the entire world today, developing a vaccine to protect more than 300 million people just in the United States, let alone the rest of the world, to protect 300 million people from COVID-19. When we look at the super low bar people that fill the top jobs in many of the medical establishments, perhaps nothing should surprise us anymore. As an example, the head honcho at the World Health Organization, WHO, is perhaps the least qualified person imaginable. Yet there he sits with a very generous salary, tax exemptions, first class travel, international prestige being fated by the leftist media. It's also an illustration as to how many supposed or supposed health organisations are stacked with political hacks, flunkies, cronies and political passengers. This job at the United States National Institute of Health, the one of head immunologist, was perhaps the plumbest, most sought after job of its kind in not only the United States, but the entire world. And what a prestigious role. Many people in the world's medical scientific community would have metaphorically killed to get this job. The NIH could have had the best of the best, the brightest of the brightest, the very best scholars and practitioners in this field were gagging for the job. And yet, this internationally very prestigious, well-paid role goes to an affirmative action black woman in her early 30s, uh, I believe comprehensively lacking in any merit, and many may say lacking merit in every respect. Now, the Scorbitt may be the world's most unlikely foremost authority on matters immunological, but she has affirmative action worked in the immunological space for about 10 years, but it's hard to believe that she's even in the top half of any of the, the real experts in this field or could even be considered an expert in any meaningful sense. If a list had been drawn up of the top 1,000 most qualified, most meritorious candidates, it is near inconceivable Ms. Corbett would have appeared anywhere on that list of applicants or even a second tier list of another thousand uh, meritorious candidates and applicants. So let's look a little bit closer at this. Let's start out in the rural township of Hillsborough in North Carolina, where Ms. Corbett completed primary and secondary schooling. Now, depending on whose numbers are to be relied upon, Hillsborough has a population of around 6,000, with more than 35% being black. Single mother families represent some two thirds of black households and each black single mother household has on an average four half siblings. So one mother for four different um, fathers uh, or intimate partners for the mother. More than half of the black population lives on or below the poverty line. If Miss Corbett was a gifted student, um, she would need to be one, you'd think, given the astonishingly bright future that lay ahead of her, then it certainly did not show up at any time during her school years. The We Make a Poster a Child of Minorities propaganda suggests that while in high school, Miss Corbett suddenly decided she wanted to be a famous scientist. This always seems to be astronauts or scientists or something like that they seem to dream of here, but maybe they do, I don't know. So it's just like that. And what black girl from a single mother, mixed sibling, a poor household in a rural township doesn't dream that big and dream of those things? Maybe they all do down that way. And then, just as magically, at that very moment when Miss Corbett as a child was thinking this, the scientific activist NGO, which includes functionaries such as Rosen and Eberhardt, handed out an internship to Miss Corbett. Coincidentally, the same NGO specialises in giving free remedial education for minority kids struggling with basic math and for low-achieving uh, minority students generally. So... Was it the case this future scientific medical genius, Miss Corbett, of course, 
can't even do math between the ages of 13 and 16 and was identified by this NGO as a low achieving student that needed specialist remedial education just to get over the line. A line that's already set at minority super low bar standards. So there's, there's not a whole lot of signs of a, a future scientific medical genius here. Uh, maybe a nurse's assistant perhaps in some rural hospital, but, but surely no more than that. From there, Kismekia heads off to college in Baltimore, the very low entry bar for minorities there, on a scholarship from another activist NGO, the Mayerhoff Institute. And there she lands at college in Baltimore. She lands a science degree, but interestingly, one that majors in sociology. I don't know how science and sociology go together here, but it's look, it's a degree combo um, given the major in sociology where no minority student ever seems to fail. Uh, not that I could find out. Now, I believe scholarships are essential, essential in any advanced society. And bright kids should be identified and they should receive uh, scholarships if they come from you know, poorer families or poorer backgrounds. Just because someone is really bright, but they also have to be poor, doesn't mean they should have any sort of impediments placed in front of them. So uh, scholarships are a great idea that these poor kids, but bright kids, they must be bright, can have a comprehensive education based around their natural aptitude, which which could be mathematics or something else. But these scholarships should be used sparingly to support natural ability, above average ability, and not the perverted device or become a perverted device to create fake, forced, equal race gender outcomes. Some may describe Kismekia as being a race-based uh, SJW activist during her college years. Others say she was just fighting back against all those damn white Nazi oppressors. You know, the, the same ones who bailed up that actor, Jesse Smollett, in Chicago as he came out of the subway shop. Oh, oh wait. In the light of Miss Corbett's recent social media posts, posts that contain what many may describe as virulent anti-white racism, and some of these being mentioned on, on Tucker Carlson tonight or referred to on Tucker Carlson tonight, is worth noting that even with all the help, all the encouragement, all the free passes, all the being gifted scholarships, places, positions, all the handouts, everything delivered on a silver platter opportunities, the prestigious big paying job, lots of white folks to boss around at the office, Miss Corbett still appears to hate white people and all white institutions and all of white society. A society that has gifted her, given her so much on a silver platter is the object of her hatred. I wonder what's going on there. After gaining the degree, Kismeki was then gifted some quite prestigious intern positions and other paid work as um, uh, research science trainer roles and one that would have thought you know, should have been awarded on merit but to the most gifted science students. But it's uh, said these roles are handed out to a, a sociology major. Um, anyway, looking at some of these so-called research institutes and the United Nations and activist NGO funding that props them up, it may come as no surprise that a team of 13 people that I'm looking at online right now, there are only two white people in, in this team of 13, and one of them is the receptionist. The other white person is a, is a, a gay uh, LGBT activist into HIV research. The women researchers in this unit are in the majority, as are black and brown folks from impoverished third world basket case countries. This suggests medical research has definitely been infected, but it ain't from viruses. It's from an excess uh, uh, of, uh, no, fuck. This suggests medical research has definitely been infected, all right, but it ain't from viruses uh, or from an excess of high standards. The bar must be incredibly low for these people to be getting these jobs. Kismekia then heads off to southern India, or Sri Lanka to be precise, on another affirmative action scholarship and studies local diseases. At the same time, she gained a PhD in 2014 with a very, very generous set of credits given towards the PhD for the politically correct work in helping black and brown people in Sri Lanka, which is an island off the coast of India. In late 2014, with the ink barely dry on the PhD, Kismekia is then snapped up by the National Institute of Health, the NIH, and given a research fellowship, no less, as soon as she walks in the door all suggesting a pre-arranged gender race quota play was going on here. Then, just barely into her 30s, not long after starting there, Kismeki was then given the top job, the top immunologist job at the NIH. That's the, the top job in the whole United States and in terms of prestige, probably the whole world. 
We need to be realistic here. If a COVID-19 had never appeared because Mechia would just be another taxpayer-funded affirmative action flunky hive, that would go unnoticed. Indeed, has Ms Corbett not sent out some very inappropriate anti-white racist tweets, she may still have gone under the radar and not been noticed. But this is what affirmative action gets you in the end. We all pay a heavy price for what I believe is such destructive social engineering. And of the NGOs that played a large role in elevating and shepherding Ms Corbett through the education system and into prestigious employment, the, the same type of NGOs who endlessly push forced mass migration, forced equal outcomes for, for all regardless of merit, and who viciously denounce Gentile whites at all and every opportunity, any form of merit, as, as, as they would see it, earned merit of any kind to try to be the best, to try and come first in your exams and striving to work hard, that's all just white supremacy. That, 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 if you've got a, and if you've got a problem with that, you, you fascist, Nazi, bigot, homophobe, xenophobe, racist, transphobe, fascist. At the very least, these NGOs that are so actively and energetically and single-mindedly assisting Ms. Corbett throughout made no effort to dissuade Kismekia from practicing anti-white hatred and entertaining extreme anti-white thoughts. It is possible, if not likely, they may have encouraged her to hold, share and further develop such anti-white views. Taxpayer funded, that is taxpayer money from white people, taxpayer funded scholarships on how to hate white America and particularly white American Gentile men. Is this what has become of our civilization? Is this where we are today? Why do these same activist organisations get political protection and favoured government treatment such as tax exemption, backdoor grants, favoured access to and influence within the education sector? Why indeed? Now, like many people, I don't really care who is in the job or where they're from. As long as they're capable, they were, were hired on merit and genuinely the best available at the time, and they perform their duties to a high and acceptable standard. When it is painfully obvious, however, that the person hired is not even in the top half, not even the top three quarters of available applicants, and is obviously an affirmative action quota hire, and then what's more, someone being handed a critical job, in this case anyway, that many lives may and probably will depend on, then we should all have a problem with that. We should all have a problem with that sort of affirmative action hiring, and rightly so. Affirmative action hiring for busboys or Walmart greeters is not the same thing. And when you go to hospital for heart surgery, do you want the surgeon who tells you that they flunked every medical test they ever sat for, they missed every grade, but they got a quota passed through anyway? And they also, by the way, hate all white people. Do you want your much-loved pet operated on by some unqualified passenger who took a free ride on the affirmative action machine? Of course you don't. Yet this goes to a wider problem in the Western nations today, and one that is bleeding, if not hemorrhaging, our wealth away. Wherever I go to access services or do business, I must deal, for the most part, with forced affirmative action folks who are minimally qualified or completely unqualified, black, brown people who may barely speak functional English. Without doubt, better qualified white people are passed over for these jobs, all in the name of perverse ideological race quotas and forced mass migration quotas. Do we, does any nation really want to do this to themselves? It's, it's tantamount to a form of suicide. You've been with Tacitus today at your Pushback channel and thank you for listening.